Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 7th, 2022, current on 1120 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple hurricane threats over the next several days. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic today, we have a few systems to note here. We have finally Hurricane Earl. We have Hurricane Danielle, Invest Area 95L, and a new system coming off the coast of Africa today. We'll talk about all these players here in a minute. We can see this on the graphical tropical weather outlook from this morning. Again, two hurricanes out there in the Atlantic Basin at the moment. And then we have 95L with a 60% chance over the next five days as this moves off towards the north and west. And a low probability for development for a system emerging off the coast of Africa today will be moving towards the west here and eventually find itself in more favorable conditions to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. We take a look here at Hurricane Earl. Again, right now the storm is becoming better organized today. We noticed that on the visible satellite imagery, we have much more of a compact circular look to the overall, overall cloud pattern this morning. However, we still notice that there is some dry air in the environment. We notice all these arc clouds here. This is indicating outflow boundaries and the presence of dry air still getting sucked into the environment. We also notice that the cloud pattern is having a hard time expanding on the southern side. There's kind of a very sharp cutoff here to the overall cloud field. And this is still because we have some pretty strong shear, about 25 to 30 knots of shear right now impacting our storm. And that has kind of kept it at bay. If we look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier today, we notice that pressures have fallen significantly since yesterday. Again, yesterday afternoon, we were dealing with pressures in the 990s. Today, we we're dealing with pressures down in the high 970s at this point. So this is indicative that we have a much more intense circulation today, one that is able to hold its own. And we also notice that we have multiple hurricane force wind barbs on every side of the circulation at this point. We have hurricane force winds on every side of the circulation, and that is indicating that we have a pretty robust eye wall structure. And if we actually look here at the recon observations, this is the plane that was in there from earlier this morning. We noticed that in the lowest half a kilometer in the atmosphere, we have winds that are right around 80 knots or so, especially on the northern side and then we have lighter winds over here on the west and towards the east here. So again, we have some pretty strong winds and you can see at flight level, we have what appears to be a, an almost closed eye wall at this point. Now, we can see here that if we look at the precipitation field, we notice that again, the deeper convection right now is off towards the north and west here. And this has been trying to rotate around. We can see this in the overall pattern here on the wind barbs, we notice that again, stronger winds over here that are trying to wrap around, but hurricane force winds do extend on, on every single side of the circulation. We'll have to see if this deeper convection can rotate around here, because if it's able to do so and close off that eye wall structure, we could see a faster rate of intensification. We look at the track forecast here, we notice that this is expected to become a category four hurricane sometime by Friday as it is passing Bermuda and then quickly weakening into a tropical storm by Sunday. We notice though that again, even though this is expected to pass well towards the east of Bermuda at this point, we do have a tropical storm warning for the island of Bermuda. Tropical storm conditions are expected. If we look at the impact forecast here, we could see tropical storm force gusts here closing in on 50 to 55 miles per hour at times, and this could even be a little bit higher than that. So there's certainly still the probability that we could see some pretty robust wind uh, gusts here and the potential for some heavy rainfall and flooding issues on the island of Bermuda. So it is something to kind of keep in mind there if you are traveling or living there. Again, tropical storm warning is in effect. Look at the H war forecast here. This is the 060 run valid for 2 a.m. this morning. This is the analysis period. We still note that right now we have that shear coming out of the southwest here, and that's not really allowed that southern side to fully close off yet. So we are still dealing with an open circulation or kind of an open eye wall at this point. But we notice that the configuration starts to change as we progress through the next few hours and into tomorrow that shear pattern actually not only relaxes, but now it starts to change the orientation here. 
and we start to get a favorable jet interaction to the north here. We're starting to tap into some of this jet environment to the north because of a trough, and that's now allowing for this outflow to rapidly expand and diverge outwards. This is going to create kind of an explosion of convection and overall should help to deepen the pressures really rapidly beginning tomorrow. And so we kind of notice here that by the time this storm is near Bermuda, this is now down into the 950s and uh, could be a pretty strong Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane as it is passing. Now, again, if we look at the infrared satellite imagery here, we notice that, again, this is the island of Bermuda right here. So there definitely is the probability that as this passes Bermuda, some heavy weather could be expected. If we actually look here on the zoomed in um, radar here from the simulated radar, radar, we notice that, again, there definitely is some of these squalls here that could reach the island of Bermuda uh, sometime late Thursday night into early Friday morning as this is passing well towards the east. So, again, a direct landfall looks pretty unlikely at this point. However, tropical storm conditions are to be expected on the island of Bermuda as we progress Thursday night into Friday morning. And we also have another system out there. This is Hurricane K in the East Pacific Basin. This will be moving towards the northwest over the next several days. We do have hurricane warnings that are in effect for portions of the Baja Peninsula. This will become a strong Category 2 hurricane with sustained winds of 110 miles per hour sometime by Thursday as this is uh, kind of passing very near uh, the Baja Peninsula. A landfall could still happen somewhere uh, kind of where this Thing little juts out right there. Uh, landfall is certainly possible, but again, this will be rapidly weakening as it does so. So this isn't going to be one of those instances where you have a strengthening storm, you have a weakening storm, but either way, tropical storm conditions could be expected even on the other side of the Baja Peninsula, south of Arizona, there could be some tropical storm conditions. We have a tropical storm watch all the way up to the California border here. So we do have a tropical storm watch all the way up to the California border. Very unprecedented because we don't really have that happen. So this is definitely a very rare event. You can see the wind field, already some tropical storm force winds impacting portions of the southern Baja Peninsula. This will be moving northward and hurricane conditions are to be expected within the next 36 hours across portions of the Baja Peninsula. So something to kind of keep in mind there. Now, of course, also in the Atlantic Basin, we are still watching two other additional systems. Again, we have 95L and a new system south and east of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point. If you look at the GFS evolution here for these two systems, we notice that we do have the potential for at least one tropical system to form within the next couple of days. This is a two-day forecast here. This is valid by 2 a.m. Friday. We could have a potential tropical depression or storm forming from 95L. This will be quickly ejected towards the northwest here, kind of trying to catch up here with Earl. And then we have this new system that's coming off the coast of Africa. This also could go on to develop. And in the GFS field, this does go on to become a pretty potent hurricane as by the end of the forecast, this is now diving towards the west-southwest here. Now, again, whether or not this is any threat to the island chain at this point or whether or not this even develops, of course, that's going to be a big determining factor if we look at the european forecast here and we'll look at the zero z runs again the zero z forecast was a little bit stronger here with this particular storm 95l and then the wave behind it it seems like doesn't really do too much so we're gonna have to kind of just keep in mind and, and see kind of what happens over the next couple of days because again we noticed that the the european here is kind of developing the wave behind that and it's kind of just been the theme so we have a lot of potential systems over the next several days, but again, the main threats right now are going to be the potential for Hurricane Earl to be impacting Bermuda over the next couple of days, and also the potential for Hurricane K to bring hurricane conditions to portions of the Baja Peninsula as we progress through the next few days. All right, so that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.